Welcome to the MPS uh, language extension demo here. In this demo we are going to extend not the Java language, the base language, but rather the C language which we've implemented as part of the embedder.com -E project. What we want to do is we want to be able to use an assert statement as part of normal C programs. So this is more or less a normal C program here. And of course we cannot add an assert statement yet because there is no assert yet. So we're going to create a language extension that contains the assert. So to keep things modular, we're going to put the language, language extension into its own little language. And I've already created, sorry, there is actually some kind of truck uh, driving backwards in front of my window. I can't close it now. And there is already a new language called DBC Design by Contract, which is at this point empty. I've just created it with one wizard just before I recorded the video. And uh, so the first thing we want to do to create this new um, kind of concept is we want to create well, a language concept called assert statement. So we we'll go here to the structure, create a new concept, which we call assert statement. Now, we want to be able to use the assert statement in places where our C program expects a statement. So using well, object-oriented polymorphism kind of stuff, we want to make sure that our assert statement extends the statement concept defined in our C programming language. Now, of course, we don't have that yet because our language has no relationship to our C language yet. In other words, what we have to do is we have to go to the language properties. Oops, sorry, wrong button. Go to the language properties and um, go to the extended languages and we want to extend our core language, which is basically the C implementation. So once we've done that, we should be able to put um, the statement class as you know the extends thing. So in other words, now our assert statement is now a statement that we can use it wherever statements are used. Now, um, of course, there needs to be more to that. Um, how do we want to render our assert statement? Well, um, or how should it be structured, I should say. The assert statement, of course, has an expression that has to be true in order to not fail as an assert statement, right? So we go to the children, we create a new children child of type expression, which we might call expr and has cardinality of one. So what this means is that our assert statement has a child, you know, tree wise, a child of type expression called expr. And of course, expression is something that comes from our C core basic language. So um, by just you know, using it here, we can reuse concepts defined in the basic language right here. Now there is a second thing, which is uh, um, something, you know, the error message that should be output if the expression fails. So we give it a new string property, which we call probably message. Okay, so this is the structure definition. Now, of course, we want to be able to show this thing in the editor, so we need some kind of syntax. So let's go to the editor definition and create an editor for the assert statement. Now, editor definition is interesting because this is a projectional tool. So the editor is a kind of projection rule definition. So what we want to do is we want to have a horizontal list. And the first element in that list should be a constant with the word assert. In other words, an, a keyword, right? And now, what do we want to show next? What do we want to show after the assert keyword? Well, it's probably the expression. Now, you see, we don't have to define the notation for the expression because expressions already have editors defined in the language from which we extend, in the core language. So we're done with that. Now, the next piece of syntax might be another constant. Let's say we use this arrow, and then we want to put the message. So this basically defines the syntax. We might want to apply some style. You know, we want to go here and let's say the uh, text uh, foreground color, you know, could be red just to make it look cool. Okay, now we've defined the structure and we've defined the uh, editor. We want to do one more thing, and that is we want to define an alias for this thing. An alias, I'll show you in a second what an alias is. The alias is typically relatively similar to the keyword. So we're now going to compile it to make it, uh, you know, to make it usable by MPS. This usually takes between 5 and 20 seconds, depending on how big your language is. And um, we can now go to uh, our piece of code again and now insert an as no. Why can't we insert the assert statement yet? 
Well, our assert statement is in a separate language and if we look at the properties of our model here, we can see that we don't yet use this DBZ language. So we just go to use languages, add the DBC stuff and after we've done that and uh, waited for a second, we should be able to use the assert statement here, right? So we see the red color, we can put in an expression here, oops, an expression here, and um, we get the error message here, which would be something like this. So that's nice. Um, and, and we can just simply type the assert, right? We can just type it down. The reason why we can simply type it is because we've defined the alias. Uh, so the alias, basic, ba alias is basically what's shown in the code completion window. So, so far so good. The problem is still that, of course, if I put 1 plus 2 or 1 plus 3, that's wrong because that needs to be a Boolean. Right? So we have to go back to our language definition and define a type system rule. MPS comes with uh, a complete type inference engine and we want to define an inference rule which let's define for the assert statement. Uh, there is this bug that loses focus sometimes. So here is our rule and now we want to say the type of the assert statements expression must be and I'm not going to explain everything in detail here because we don't have the time, must be the boolean, right? And once we've defined this and recompiled the language, yes, please, then we should get in our, you know, in the usage where we use this thing, we should get an error. And, um, well, waiting for a little while, going back to our example program, Um, it's uh, still generating because it had to generate some dependent languages here and now we get an error in compatible types. If we let's say say uh, this must be one greater than four then it looks better right. We can of course also define a variable here and we can use the variable in, in this expression because a variable reference is valid. So we can we can completely integrate, you know, because we've defined this to be an expression of type boolean, every expression that is a valid C can now be used here. Okay, so far so good. What's missing is a translation into something our C language can actually execute, uh, but because we're limited to 10 minutes here on YouTube, we're going to do that in our next screencast. So if you come back to the next screencast, you will uh, see how we implement the generator that generates this down to basically an if statement so it can be used with any Z compiler. Thanks for watching so far.